So it's now early August, and um, I'm here to make the post to protect the trees from ice. And um, these are just some trees that fell down in our woods that I'm going to cut up for the posts. So now I'm going to sharpen the ends of these and I've got my dad holding the other end so it stays still. Um, normally you'd sharpen the, um, the thick end so the thicker end is in the ground when you pound it in, um, but these are a little bit thicker than we want to be pounding in right now so I'm sharpening the thin end. And Also I would normally probably peel these but um, I'm not peeling them because that takes a lot of effort and in this situation we don't think it's going to improve it that much for the amount of effort it's going to take. way and honestly probably the best way is to take a, a rock bar drive it in as far as you can and make little circles to wind out the hole and in the same spot do it again and then do that as much as needed to make the depth of hole that you need and the width of hole um, in this case we don't need a very deep hole because we aren't trying to drive these in very deep I'm not and then this going it pounded in with this is an eight pound maul, um, the largest maul that you can easily handle is a good idea. And these are pretty short. I don't expect the ice to be that high above the water level or above the ground level based on what I was seeing this spring. And yeah, this spring we didn't have as much flooding, but. It takes a lot of water to get it up high. And um, if we're putting in like taller ones, um, you can only put it in this method so tall, like as tall as you can reach, um, which to me is about six foot posts. Um, if you need posts taller than that, you really have to excavate around it. And maybe you can pound it in a little bit and then backfill in. You just can't do these super high up. So I put in the nine posts that I cut, um, and for this upstream tree, I kind of prioritized the upstream trees, which are also the largest trees. So um, that one over there had three posts in it. Um, this one over here had two posts in it, and the um, other ones all had one post. I had nine posts in total. And the reason I prioritized those is I they're bigger, and so I have a little bit more investment in them. And the other thing is that um, they are further upstream, um, so I think that they're more likely to um, get, they're more likely to have the, the ice come at them. And the other thing I've been doing, um, I don't have a scythe or sickle with me today, we did it fairly recently, is we've been scything or sickling around these trees, kind of a big 
roundabout and then going in with our hands and pulling out the, um, the, the, the stuff around it so that it isn't blocking the light for the trees. Um, we've been having to do this every like three-ish weeks and I don't have my thick leather gloves on now that I try to do when I normally do this because there's some um, thistles that are quite, quite spiny. Um, so we'll do that and after I finish that for the rest of the trees, I'm, even though I'd eventually like to get more of these posts in, about two per tree, I think, um, I'm tired, it's hot, and um, I ran out of water a while ago, so I'll be going in soon. Don't have that much more energy to do more. So it's October 2nd, kind of end of the growing season roundup for these trees, and I don't know, all of them seem to have survived the summer, though in some in better condition in, than others. Um, three of them seem like they're mostly kind of the dark green, like very nice looking tree color, while another two are more this like yellowy color, looks like they're kind of maybe partly dying, and this one is a mix of both of them, which is why I'm doing it here. Um, so we'll have to see what makes it through the season, um, but it may or may not be particularly um, good to these trees that it is this yellowy color. And my guess there's actually a couple of places on this tree where um, whole branches have died off. And my guess is that that happened like as soon as I transplanted it. My guess this was some important root for that, or I don't know. I don't really quite understand how trees work. Like is one root, would that lead to a directly a branch? Um, but that died off almost as soon as this was transplanted. So. It definitely, I think, had something to do with the transplanting, whereas this is coming later. And, yeah, I'm not super happy about it, but we'll have to see how these go. And we also had a very dry summer this year. Very dry, definitely second half of May through June. July was a bit more, and kind of August and September. September was really dry. You can see more info on that with data in my urine fertilization from 2020 video. It's April 17th and I'll start you out with the good news. The trees survived the winter. Um, I don't particularly like the color of this tree. It's a little bit too light green for me to be sure that it's really survived or just being that way for now. Um, but then there's the bad news. Though they survived the winter, the beavers came shortly after winter ended and this tree they completely cut off, just a little stub of a stump. This one over here is, there's some more stuff to it, but it's still pretty gone and probably won't survive. Um, this one over here they didn't completely destroy. This one's actually pretty, a decent chance it'll survive. At this one over here, these, these two, these last two are the ones that's the biggest ones, the most ones I was most excited about. Here's a little stump. So well, that's really disappointing. I thought that beavers didn't like these trees, but clearly I was incorrect about that. So to try to combat the beavers, I've got some chicken wire, um, reuse or reclaimed chicken wire that I'm going to put up around these trees and others surviving in this area. Um, on terms of ice, can't tell if these stakes would have helped against ice because there wasn't ice flowing through here for, well, one reason in particular, which is that it was a, it was, the melt this year was because of sun melting rather than rainfall melting, which meant that it was much slower and that, that meant that the ice melted off before it really flowed down river um, instead of having the pans of ice coming down after rainfall. Um, and so water didn't really even get up to these trees this year and there wasn't ice flowing in that water. I'm not sure if I'm going to replant. Probably I will um, and maybe expand it a little bit. This chicken wire is not complete protection, but rather a deterrent which will hopefully keep the beavers away. I did not bring enough to wrap all the trees I want to, so I will have to return with more wire. 